Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. That clip that you just saw in the opening video actually happened yesterday. So I had the time to set up the camera and then videotape that one clip and then I guess I just got sidetracked. So it's actually the next day and we have a little problem. These dinguses broke the fence. Nice going guys. And that would be Preston, trying to be the dominant male goat next to Samurai, which obviously, no, because <laughs> he's probably less than half his size. Anyways, I need to fix that fence, but before I do, I want to show you guys something really cool that I've been working on. It's cool for me. Anyway, uh, goats are super food motivated. And every day now I've been bringing three of my girls to a place with grass and then back to their normal pen, which is this one. You can see that they've eaten all the grass in this one. So I have a little, little pot of grain here. And then I'll just shake that and they follow me. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Good girls. There you go. Oh, don't run it over. There you go. So they actually just beat me <laughs> to the race this time. Which is nice. So I know that if they do get out, it's a lot bigger of a chance that they're actually gonna stick around and just kind of stay where they know. Because when I first got them, I was so afraid of them getting out and like running away, but now it's a little less that I'm nervous for that. Especially since they can't actually get out anyway. Cupid, it's okay. It's okay. So yeah, a little update on the goats and the fun things that I've been doing with them. this morning and I had a nap and now I am back in the swather but we have the haybine header attachment instead of the swather header. The main difference between the haybine header and the swather header is the size. The swather is 36, no it's 35 feet and this one is 16 feet and they're both used for different things. So a swather header is really ideal for silaging because it takes in more crop at once because it's double the size of this one and it doesn't crush the plant so it keeps it from drying out as fast as the haybine header does. So from my videos previously when we were silaging you'll notice that a main difference here is that there's a roller, a spinner here and that actually helps to crack the plant so that it dries out quicker. So that makes this header actually ideal for hay because it'll crack the plant causing it to dry out faster. Because we all know once you start haying, it inevitably rains. And as soon as you get ra rain on a swath, the quality of the hay goes down. So farmers really enjoy convenient and well thought out processes to be able to get crops in faster and being able to crack the plant as you cut it is one of those ways that we 
can achieve that. So this is all grown grass with a smattering of a couple of other plants, but for the most part, just grown grass. It's mainly for the calves, and then my mom likes to joke and call it hobby hay. So we use it to feed the rabbits, the goats, and the horses, as well as the calves. And it's an amazing field this year, this one specifically. We got enough rain where there are some really heavy spots that the grass is actually laying down. So all in all, a really nice field to look at. So there's one point there in the distance. I don't know if you can tell the difference on camera, but it's a bit darker. And that's a low spot where there's actually a bunch of really thick grass and those low spots are really thick because it collects more moisture in the springtime when the snow melts and also when it rains so any field that kind of has a dip going down like that is usually really really thick crop on there so uh, you gotta watch when you're swathing that you pay attention to those because you can actually plug up the machine if you're going really fast for the rest of the field and you suddenly hit the thick spot and you'll uh, basically just jam the knives so it's best to slow down for these spots because they're so thick. Here we have Rosetta. I'm no longer bandaging up her leg because it does need to dry out so that it can scab over properly. And if I'm honest, I probably had it wrapped up for a little too long because it was starting to, I don't know, like leak a little bit, which I like it's good, but I don't want it to, to do too much of that. So letting it dry out now and letting it scab over. I'm still running cold water over it every day and putting fresh raw honey on it. So it's looking a lot better. She's putting weight on it. She's walking almost normally. And she actually let me put her in the sink this evening. So she knows that I'm helping her out and she's starting to feel better and she's trusting me a lot more now so that makes me really happy so I'm really thankful <laughs> that Rosetta is doing so much better now and I'm with the little guys or as we've been saying as I met the youngest <laughs> we're with the little guys very playful hey <laughs> yeah so they're actually three weeks old today, which is unbelievable. I can't believe they're three weeks old after so many weeks of waiting and agonizing over, oh my gosh, when is she gonna have babies? They were finally there and now they're already three weeks old. So it's crazy, but they're so lovable and so sweet and 
I'm so happy just to sit and spend some time with them. They're so funny and playful. <laughs> They'll be going outside soon, I think, because then there's more room for them to play and have fun and there's more things for them to jump on out there. <laughs> and Payette's always a little bit jealous because she doesn't get as much attention <laughs> as she did when she was pregnant, so she's very assertive in saying, okay, now it's my turn, <laughs> right? Yeah. Whew. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna... <laughs> I think we're gonna end the video there guys uh, thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one bye <laughs>